to the winter sports season we go. Let's start with the women's basketball team, of which a whole lot of talent came back, and they have not disappointed to start this year. Uh, again, con continued success under Coach Semesco is not a surprise to all of us, but you know, every year, and this year the hardest part for our team really was trying to schedule. With all the great players we had coming back from our top 25 team uh, that finished in the national rankings last year, and then we added uh, really good newcomers to that group, uh, we were fortunate to already have Princeton and LSU on our schedule because right. they may not have done it otherwise. And we went to LSU, and we, we won by 14 points uh, against Kim Mulkey, uh, the uh, legendary coach from Baylor, who is second winning us all-time coach to Carl being the third winningest and uh, Carl closed the gap after that game in Baton Rouge so you know we played really well we played Temple we went to uh, Disney beat two good teams in Manhattan and Fairfield and went to Puerto Rico and beat St. Louis and Tennessee Tech so we're at a point where uh, we really wish we could have played some additional power teams but uh, hopefully we'll get a chance later in the season in the meantime uh, they keep shooting the threes uh, we, we broke our school record uh, uh, recently and it's just a matter of I think for our fans who haven't had a chance to come out and watch this team uh, it's exceptional and uh, you take the veteran team we have and you add the newcomers uh, including Kirsty Phils who was a great player on that right. team two years ago when we were 30 and 3 and ranked in the top 25 uh, it's really been a lot of fun and the FGC of women achieved the top 25 ranking the loss of Princeton knocked them out they're right on the verge maybe they'll get back in before conference play begins after the first of the year the men are off to I believe what is their best start winning percentage wise since you've gone D1? Yeah, it's really been fun. Uh, you know, some great games early on in the season, playing at Sweet 16, Loyola, where we hunt tough uh, on the road there. Then we come back and we play USC in a great environment with a sellout with uh, Andy coming back and we're hanging close with them. And uh, they're in a position where, as we speak, they're ranked in the top 10 in the country uh, right. in the net um, and undefeated. And we're, um, you know, we, then we play Rhode Island at home and a team from the A-10 that's really had success in recent years and uh, just beat Milam modern Boston College twice within a week the week prior um, and you know as we move forward um, the continuation of this success is is really been fun to, to watch uh, adding a little bit of almost falling off the women's team with the number of three-pointers we're shooting this year for Dunk City which we still do dunk um, you know the number of threes that we've been playing it's been exciting basketball so uh, we're looking forward to being a very much uh, in the mix in the ASUN uh, conference race we've got you know Liberty who's been very successful the last several years and newcomers Jacksonville State Eastern Kentucky uh, have been off to good starts too. So uh, we're looking forward to our fans coming out and with the uh, start of January getting in a position where we can get close to selling out again. And the women who are near the top of the top 25 mid-major rankings and in the national top 25, the men at the time of our taping also have snuck in to the bottom of the mid-major top 25 rankings, which is very impressive. Now to the pool we go where FGCU, Liberty, that rivalry that lives on and well, FGCU gets to claim a title. Well, we're in a position where I don't know if there'll be very many situations where you play that, have that many events in a swim meet and finish with like 1748.5. And I think it's got to be the only time that's ever done. So we uh, last year uh, had an opportunity to uh, co-share our, I think it's our 10th championship uh, that we've had in, uh, since we started a program 14 years ago. Uh, and it will be a battle again this year. They get to host in the pool. I don't know if there's pool advantage like there yeah, is for no, other sports. Really. Like is there one, is there a greater tide at home or on the yeah, road? Yeah, they like... know the better lanes or something like that. But, you know, we have a really strong team uh, coming back, certainly led by uh, Petra Hama, who's our All-American swimmer, our Olympic and, and uh, the last two years, the CCS Swimmer of the Year. But we have Tori Zardecki and, and I think six or seven other medal winners from last year coming back. So we're off to a good start and uh, looking forward to competing again uh, come uh, the end of February up in Lynchburg. With Liberty leaving the conference, is the swimming rivalry going to stay? Are they going to stay? Because, I mean, I, this has turned into something quite intense. Yeah, I'm not sure with Conference USA whether they have enough teams. It, there's so much change. I don't right. know who's in and who's out Me and neither. who, who hosts, uh, has a number of teams for it. But uh, um, it'll be interesting because, uh, you know, it has been a great rivalry since we started our program. And in turn, uh, it will be something that, you know, would be disappointing. Uh, we don't like going up there to swim in their pool. We'd love for them to come down here and swim in our outdoor pool, but uh, we'll find out shortly about it. A lot has happened off the field this sports year, starting with a Hall of Fame. 
and you were kind enough to, stupid enough to invite me to be in the room along with a dozen other qualified people. But so we've started up a Hall of Fame, which in and of itself is exciting. And in a way, we've already kind of shown our hand as to who's in. Well, the, the first part was that, you know, the Hall of Fame with the Dunk City team going in and, and uh, it just, it was a tremendous evening. I think, you know, I've been here now in my 13th year and it's probably one of the more heartwarming uh, evenings that I've been a part of uh, to see the individuals, not just from the team that were able to make it back. And unfortunately, because of starting it and wanting to put them in first, we had some very talented individuals like uh, Chase Fielder and Sherwood uh, Brown and Bernard Thompson that weren't able to join us. We did get them uh, tape recorded, but it would have been great to have them there sure. uh, but it the fans themselves the energy from our fans that night is just walking in the door the buzz that was in that room uh, was exciting uh, and it took us back to some great memories back in in 2013 and then they're very well uh, served being in there and have Andy come back and then to do it in a manner where we're playing him the next night and he's nationally ranked. Uh, you put that all together, um, it was very uh, heartwarming for me to hear Andy and others that came back. Uh, Christoph came, Faradell came all the way in uh, from Switzerland. Right. We, we did forget to tell him what the, the attire was for the event, but uh, you know, he, he looked European. I don't know if it would have mattered, yeah. I gotta be honest. Yeah, it was a little different with the beard. I wasn't expecting <laughs> the beard, but uh, it just really was a, a fun night. And uh, so now we've basically, basically set the bar um, for the next event which will occur um, in the middle of January there's still opportunities for folks if they want to come and and it's again the first time you do it you don't want to make it too big but you want to include everybody and I think we got it right I think the five individuals that uh, we have going in uh, personify what this program has been from the start uh, certainly including Chris Sale and, and Brooke Young with sweat as athletes and then three giants really got it going from Ben Hill Griffin uh, to Dr. Bill Merwin and Dwayne Swanson Sr. Um, they epitomize what uh, I basically came in, thankfully, uh, after all the hard work they had done, um, and it created an environment that has lent itself to success. Well, I know when we were sitting down and deciding who it is that was going to make up the first class, not to get too melodramatic, but I know some of us who are also baseball fans were like, hey, this is our inaugural Hall of Fame class. You know, this picture has to hold up in the lobby for the next 40, 50 years where future generations look at it and go, yeah, okay, yeah, they, absolutely, they, they should have been in. Yeah. So I felt a little pressure, I got to admit. Oh, no, I, I think we all should. And, you know, we want to be basically the, uh, the guardians of, of making that the special honor that it should be. And uh, some schools do it right after five years of somebody leaving. I, I'm really glad that we wait 10. Uh, I think the individuals, when they're at the earliest in their early 30s, can enjoy it a lot more. I think they appreciate it better. Um, I actually had that conversation with Chris when he went into the A Sun Hall of Fame several years ago, um, and he was in his mid-20s at the time. But it game, same thing. They wanted to put the best of the best in. So uh, I think we've done that. And I also believe that this committee's got a lot of hard work in the years to come yes, because we do. it's only going to make it uh, more difficult as we continue to uh, try to limit ourselves to a, a finite number. I mean, some of us may chicken out and be one and done, just <laughs> so you know.